<laughs> Good morning, everybody. To see this room, plenty of delegations. Thank you very much, and welcome to Rome. I'll turn into Italian for making my presentation. Um, so you can have the translation, I think, in the headphones. Um, I, is there any problem? The volume is not good. Uh, is it possible to adjust the, the technician is there? Yes? Okay. So good morning, everybody. Signora Presidenza, Signora Presidente. Madam President of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, Mr. Secretary of State, Madam Deputy Secretary General of the Council of Europe, members of government and members of parliament of the member countries of the Council of Europe and the Mediterranean States, authorities, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to host you here, the Chamber of Deputies, and to inaugurate this conference. Italy was the first founding country of the Council of Europe and of the Euro uh, European Union to ratify the Convention of Istanbul on preventing and combating violence against women and domestic violence. And I'm proud to say that uh, the ratification was the first legislative uh, step of this parliament, and it took place in the summer of last year. It is for these reasons that once again, with great pride, together with the Italian Foreign Affairs Ministry and with the Council of Europe, we decided to organize here and host here the Chamber of Deputies this event under the title of Safe from Fear, Safe from Violence, celebrating the entry into force of the Istanbul Convention. What is the aim of this initiative? We wish to highlight the importance and, and the potential that this treaty holds out and to encourage the countries that have not uh, yet signed the convention to do so and to encourage the parties to the convention to fully implement the provisions of this convention. As you certainly know, all those who are here today know very well that this convention is highly innovative it defines violence against women as a violation of human rights. Now, this is historic. It is an extraordinary step forward, and we must make the most of it. It is a violation of human rights. It is no longer uh, a private matter, no longer something that should be concealed behind the walls of our homes, no longer something that should be simply um, not spoken of should it have taken place outside of the home. That is the past. These forms of violence are not only ethically unacceptable, violence against, violence against women, but it is a form of violence that carries a huge cost from a social and also an economic point of view. At a national level, at a European, at a global level, it is estimated that roughly one woman out of every three has been the victim of physical or sexual violence. And the costs for health expenditure, the social costs, the costs in terms of, of uh, safety and the uh, judiciary procedures, all of this, these costs are huge. We would like to be able to use those resources differently. And that is why it is imperative that we, that we use all means that are available to put an end to this form of violence and to act in a strategic, coordinated, synergic way, as is stated very clearly in the Convention of Istanbul itself. In combating violence against women, uh, repression is, of course, essential. Those who perpetrate violence against women must be prosecuted. They must be put in a position uh, in which they will not be able to repeat this offense. At the same time, however, vic the protection of victims is crucial. The victims must be protected from both, both a physical and a legal point of view. They must receive the necessary assistance 
so that they may be able to start living again a full life and without fear, as we have in the title of our conference, free from fear, free from violence. Far too often the women who report these offenses are not protected. Far too often their reports do not lead to an end to the abuse and the violence. And of course this fuels uh, a lack of confidence in the role of the state. And it means that only a tiny minority of the victims actually have the courage to seek justice. And not by chance, I believe, a recent survey of the uh, Agency of the European Union for Fundamental Rights has reported higher rates of violence against women in the Scandinavian countries, countries where, as we all know, the indices on gender equality are much higher compared uh, to the south of Europe. But perhaps, and it is my opinion, in these contexts, women are able simply to speak about what has happened without that sense of shame or that inherent sense of guilt that women feel in other contexts. It is not the women who should be stigmatized, but unfortunately this is still the case. This mindset still exists in many, many countries. However, I believe that here too, the Convention of Istanbul is highly in innovative. The rep repression of uh, the uh, perpetrators and protection of victims, important though they are, are not enough in, on their own. The roots of this horrendous form of violence are much deeper, and we must start from there to defeat this violence. There's a widespread perception of women and their bodies that is the root of this violence. Women are often used by mass media as as objects, objects that promote the sale of any sort of product. And we find these roots often in the very often violent, uh, uh, sexually based attacks against women who may hold uh, positions of leadership. And these attacks are massive and ferocious on uh, the web. And many authoritative female voices that used to be very active in the social media are now fleeing these uh, social means of communication. Therefore, there's a great need for change in mindset, and that is the title of one of the sessions of our conference, a need to change mindsets about violence against women. We need to, uh, to strive so that there will be more women in institutions, both representative and non-representative, in the business community, in academy, in civil service, not only because women account for one half of the population, globally and therefore should be equally represented in all sectors of society, not only because of that, but also because together women know how to go beyond their political differences that do exist, but they know how to go beyond that and fight together to achieve uh, important outcomes in terms of the defense of rights. And we've seen this too with the uh, adoption of the Convention of Istanbul. We saw how women were able to come together to, to advocate for women, to lobby together, to stand side by, side by side. We need to promote effective policies, also to promote um, women's employment, because that is the basis of empowerment that enables women to, to escape violence. Women need to work, women who are economically uh, dependent will have a much harder time in, espa in escaping uh, relations based on violence. Women who are empowered can choose and can, can escape from uh, situations of violence much more easily. We also need to involve men much more. And I'm pleased to see a, a good number of men here with us in this hall today because violence against women is not only uh, women's business, it is very much an issue for men, too. And to have positive results, of course, men must be involved. We need uh, educational campaigns in our schools. Young people today are, are massively exposed to this commercial approach, this 
objectification of, of female bodies. We need to have a much more mature awareness of our gender and of what interaction with the other gender means. And that is uh, the, the reason behind the, the awards that we have organized with the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, in particular the Italian delegation. We want uh, to launch uh, a prize, and we plan to do so in a few months' time. We want to choose the best um, thesis, graduation thesis, on the subject of violence against women, involving, therefore, students and uh, and their teachers uh, throughout the country in an attempt to, to study uh, this uh, phenomenon much more in depth. And we think it is an, an interesting tool to increase awareness. But, of course, we also have to look at um, the allocation of resources by government to, to prevent and to combat violence against women and to offer protection and assistance to the victims of this violence. In times of economic crisis, this is an area in which investment should be stepped up rather than reined in. And, and we have to show our political will in this way with a, a fair distribution of resources. And finally, we must take action in the direction that is pointed out clearly in the Convention. We need plans and strategies at a local and a national level, and the implementation of these plans must involve all of the stakeholders. And at this point, I would like to encourage our Italian government to uh, take action promptly. The appropriated funds are now being dispersed, but we must uh, develop and implement our uh, special plan against uh, gender-based violence and sexual violence uh, as soon as possible. It was announced in the uh, legislation adopted against what is known as femicide. It was adopted last year. Violence against, violence against women is not some sort of a tavic phenomenon that we are doomed to live with. It is not unavoidable. It is not a, a sort of natural, ineluctable a fact. It is quite the opposite. It is the outcome of the very complex mechanisms that shape our society and our culture. And it needs to be combated as such today with the uh, engagement of all, and today, together, we can defeat it. Thank you.